Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And today, we're going to be looking at two of the Godot plugins from the Melodic Mayhem bundle. Now, this is an amazing bundle. If you're looking to pick up some uh, sound effects, Foley effects, or um, game-ready soundtracks, and I'm gonna show you just how well those integrate into your game, but specifically if you're using Godot, because quite frankly, there are plugins for all three major engines, but in some ways, the Godot ones work the best. So we're gonna look today is how you use these plugins. So you've got the Godot plugin here for doing footsteps. What this will allow you to do is have dynamic footsteps in your game based off of how the materials interact with your foot. I will show you how that is set up in today's video. On top of that, we're also going to take a look at the other Godot plugin here, uh, which is this guy right here for the music playing. Now, every one of these soundtracks you're going to see here actually has different levels of intensity that you can switch out dynamically. So if your movie, if your game is getting more intense, you can have it kind of crank up the intensity. If it's getting a little bit more mellow, you can slide it down. And I'm going to show you how that works as well. And as you can see from the rest of this bundle, there's a ton of music packs in here and sound sound effects pack. So if you're looking for audio for your game, this is a huge collection of royalty-free stuff. But what I'm going to focus on today specifically is these two Godot plugins and how they work inside of Godot. So we'll step in, pun totally not intended, uh, to the Footsteps plugin and the other plugin for dynamic music as well. So we'll start with the Footstep one. Here is everything you need to get going. So I downloaded a soundtrack pack, the footstep plugin and the music plugin. So we're gonna start with this one. So let's just go ahead and extract that out. Now, I should point out, none of these are actually technically plugins, just so you know, they're they're more like extensions. Are we gonna need music one? This one actually comes with a ton of pre-configured music files as well. I'll show you how they all work together, but we need to extract that one out. And then we're gonna do our own music for one. So we're gonna need inside of this pack as well. So that is our starting point. Let us fire up the copy of Godot and go. All right, so here is our project. Let's go ahead, uh, let's remove the missing ones. We will create a new project. Of course, this is going to be in temp and we will call it odd E O. All right, so this will go in C colon slash temp. Uh, the rest of this doesn't matter. No source control, create a folder and create our project. All right, so that is the starting point. Nothing too special there. So now what we're gonna do is bring in the examples and I'll show you exactly how all of these things work together. So as soon as our project is opened up, what we're going to do is come back over here to the project right here. Uh, and we'll go into the footsteps one that we expanded out. So there's a lot of nested zips in this case. So here we go, open it up. There is our footstep sync. By the way, there is an MP4 tutorial that walks you through the basics of that. Uh, we're gonna go a little bit beyond that today. So just go ahead, extract that guy out right there. So now it's opened up and drop that into your project. And realistically, uh, you are now pretty much ready to go. It's gonna import things appropriately. The Auto Footsteps plugin is available. Now do keep in mind, again, it's not technically a plugin, so you don't have to go in here and turn it on uh, as an as an auto load or anything like that. It's just uh, a set of extensions. So the GD script you need to make things work are all available here. And what we're gonna do is fire up the example. So there is an example scene included in here and here it is. So what you've got is your player controller over here. And then as you walk through the world, you hear different, um, different levels of volume. Let me just make sure that my volume is turned up a bit so we can hear it. And let's just go check the sample. So let's go ahead, use current. And you're gonna get an idea of what we're dealing with here. So this is what this particular bit of code does. Also keep in mind, you're getting all of the footstep effects you are hearing here, and then in packs, you're getting other stuff as well. So here we are in our world. I'm gonna move around onto different surfaces. So plywood effect. Grass and so on. And if I move faster, it plays your various different footprints or footsteps at different volumes. So that is uh, add-on number one. You can obviously see how that could be quite cool. Of course, you are getting all of the audio effects in there as well. So how is this guy set up? How does it work? Well, basically what you wanna do is drop all of these GD scripts into your world, and then you're going to need sounds. So we're gonna use the default sounds in this case. So what you see here is they're all defined. So you've got uh, a variety of different grass sounds, and you're gonna notice these are actually composed of a number of different things. So different steps, medium, hard, soft, grass, uh, and so on. So if you're walking on grass, it's got multiple different sounds for that. Then you come in here for gravel, same setup there. So uh, all of their various different sound effects are available. You can literally drop the default sounds into your own game. By the way, if you head on back over to this, you will find uh, foot steps. 
There is a Footsteps found of Sound Effect Folly Pack in here as well. So if you are interested, there are additional Footstep Packs in this actual asset pack. So if you want to expand upon that, there is this additional Sound Effects Pack available in this bundle, uh, just so you are aware of that. By the way, all the relevant links will be down below. So now that you've got that in place, what we do is we find our player example. So here is our player character. Attached to the base of your player character by the ground is an auto Footsteps. This is one of the scripts that will be included right here. What this does is basically sends Raycasts into the ground to find out what kind of surface you are walking on. Now, how do you determine what kind of surface you are walking on? Well, there are a couple of different ways, but the way this project was done, so there's the option of doing a tagging system, but what they've done here is they've done it with the material override. So you see here, there is a material defined to this guy right here. You're going to see this material is called, let's just get over here, Wispy Grass Meadow. Okay, so it's going to do a search on this name and try to find a mapping of whiskey, wispy grass metal. Mapping how? Well, that now works with uh, this guess. You can also notice if I go back to our character over here, the auto footsteps, you have the option of specifying two major things here. Plus, like, the speed that your character moves around with, that's going to impact how fast the sounds are played and so on. Uh, so all these various different things can be set in here. But you're going to notice right here, the big thing here is the foot profile. So the default is a shoe one. There is also another one here for barefoot. Now, where are those? Well, they are available right here. So barefoot and shoe. So if you had another one like uh, Armored Space Marine, you could create another set of collections. So what exactly is in one of these? Well, let's open up the shoe and you will see exactly what it is. Because here's where kind of the mapping works. So it does it does that raycast in the ground, finds the material, checks the material, checks the name of the the material that is attached to it. And then what you've got here is a list of materials by classification. So you've got like dirt, grass, wood, gravel, and so on. So how do I know wispy grass maps to grass? Well, let's open up grass as an example here. And you're gonna notice it is called dirt grass, but you're gonna notice there's this array here called similar names. And what it is, is basically a mapping of. So when it does that ray cache and it finds your texture and it says, okay, it's a lawn texture. I said, okay, so we want to be in dirt and grass. And that's basically how the mapping between the sound and the textures work. Again, there are other options here uh, for doing tagging in your collision shape and defining what it's called in that regard. Uh, that wasn't documented or covered. This seems to be the only way that it works in the example. So if you want to create your own new additional element, you could do so right here uh, and create it that way. Of course, you also have the option of creating your own entire foot profile. And then you do this foot profile material specification class right there. Uh, so we could add a new spec. Oops, I did not mean to do that one. I meant to do down at the bottom here, add a new category completely. And then when you add a new category, when you open it up, you can notice again, you name it. So let's say we're walking on jello. And then what I would do is say all of the names that map with jello. So I could do similar names. And then I specify the sound to play on a soft step, a medium step, a hard step, a scuff, a landing, and so on. And you can specify multiple sounds. That's where you get like the randomness involved in it. So that is how you would set up your own materials and how you interact with them in the game world. Pretty simple stuff for the most part. So that is part one. That is the new uh, footsteps plugin and how that actually works. As you can notice, uh, if you're using Unity or uh, Unreal Engine, there is a plugin for it. The process works uh, completely different between each thing, but that is how it actually works in Godot. So now what we're going to do is focus on the sound effects one. Now, if you go ahead and open up one of these packs, so let's go on back to downloads here and open up the orchestral. Oh, I actually already extracted that, didn't I? Okay, so here we go. And again, they like doing these nested zip things. So let's extract that out again. And then what you're going to notice is there are multiple different um, formats for each song here, different intensity levels. And really, we just need the three different intensities. I'll show you how this works. It's also got the option for doing a uh, rough cut 30 second and 60 second looping. So you can see various different uh, versions. And by the way, you don't need to use their plugins to make this work, uh, but it does um, work very well with their particular stuff. So what I'm going to do, use the exact same project right here, and let's grab a music pack, so Retribution, that sounds fun. And we'll bring Retribution in right here. So this is bringing the audio files in. You could just straight up use them. You do not have to use their Intensity Music plugin to do these things, but as you're gonna notice, here you go. So you've got uh, three different versions, so Intensity 1, Intensity 2, and Main, plus these 30 and 60 second looping versions there. Now to actually go ahead and use these, you download the other plugin, which technically isn't a plugin. Uh, so let's go on back here to Downloads, right here, Downloads. And now we are into the Music plugin. And then what you wanna do, is again, there is a whole lot of nested zips going on. Extract that guy out. You'll also notice there is actually this zip of music files to play with. So if you have just the music plugin, it actually comes with some sound effects to work.
work with, which is actually kind of cool. And then what you want to do is basically take this nested Godot plugin 1.2, and you, you might want to call this like Ovani Music Player or not, because this name may not make a ton of sense, but all you're doing is dropping that directory into your project like so. Uh, it should bring in the scripts. Okay, something went wrong. I think uh, Windows uh, Windows might be going stupid on me here. Let's just do it this way, make sure that it is brought over. So it's not there yet. Let's go back over to the plugin over here and we'll just do a copy over to that folder and then this will bring it in. I'm not sure why the drag and drop did not work in that place, but the key things you're gonna wanna notice here is that this brought in an Ovani player uh, and an Avani song. And now what we can do is go ahead and use those. So to set those up, first off, very simple on the player. Uh, let's just pick our root node. We will add something to the world and that is an Avani player. So now you have this soundtrack player, which will play music files. So now what you do is queue up sounds for it. In order to do this, we need to define a sound file. This is really quite easy too. Just basically create it as a resource. So right here, new resource, like so. Once again, search for Avani. And now what you want to do is create an Avani song. And we'll call this my song one. All right, so here we go. So there is our song. And then what you're going to notice here is you define three different intensities and then optionally uh, looping uh, like so. So what we do there is go into the sound trial that we brought in earlier on. So loop 30 drops there, loop 60 drops there. So every single one of these soundtracks in this bundle is going to have these five different formats available to you like so, and then drop that into the main like so. Uh, and then you have a choice. You can do between intensities, loop 30 or loop 60. We're gonna do all intensities for this particular demonstration. So there is our song now created. We go back to our Ovani player, like so. And now we've got our songs. So we can add a song in. Uh, we will take our song and drop it in here. So now we have a song available. Now, the next thing is all you need to do is basically play your player. So you could do this with code or however you wish to go. What I'm just going to do is say, play it in the editor. There is our lovely music. Now uh, you have the ability to change the intensity. Also, you can change the volume while you're here. And, but this is the magic of this. What it allows you to do is transition between those different intensity levels kind of gradually. So a mellower version or a more intense version. Mellower version, medium intensity, maximum intensity. Let's, let's bring in one more song. So here I am, we've got the Fallen Friends. Let's go ahead and drop that. Fallen Friends, drop that in over here. In it goes. Again, back to uh, Godot. It imports in our assets. Uh, they're just straight wave files. So again, you could use these. You don't need to use the intensities. You could just use them as wave files. Uh, and then what we're going to do is create a new resource of type song right there. And then my song two. And we'll drop my song two. Once again, come up here. Bring over your entities, and there's your 30, there's your 60, there's intensity number one, and intensity number two, and then finally main. And we'll drop that in, and now we go on back over uh, to our scene, go to our Avani player, and then we just add another song in, so add element, and we drop in song two. That's it, that's all you need to do. Now you have the two songs available. Uh, you can play them in the editor. And again, control the intensity of it right here. And these two things will work together. So let's stop playing that in the editor. Uh, so you do have playback controls on this. So in code, I could say switch between song one and song two. I do wish that it had the ability right here to specify which one I wish to do. You can also loop your cue. So when the one song ends, the other one will begin. But this guy does have additional methods available to it so that you can control, you know, sound trip playback, which one to play, and that kind of stuff as well. And then we go ahead and run our scene. You're gonna notice we now have our music playing. And with the code, I can say, okay, jack up the intensity. And then when we run around, we have our different footprint effects. And that is it. That is how you use all of these assets. Now do keep in mind, there is a bunch more to it. So you've got uh, a number of different uh, music genres, pretty much all of the music genres. But what I like even more is the, uh, the sound effects. So you've got things like the sound of punches and hits and fire. Uh, and then we've got um, suspenseful music. We've got uh, Hollywood action, medieval effects. 
uh, footsteps, cyberpunk, computers, steampunk, vehicles and cars, just an absolute tonner in this pack. And again, all of these music packs, every single music pack you see here is going to have the music in that format with the different intensity levels so that you can dynamically change up your music as you play. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the bundle. Again, links down below. Uh, if you use my link, you can direct a portion of your purchase to help support games from scratch. And thank you so much if you do. It is really cool to see Godot getting stuff alongside Unreal and Unity in terms of the plugin space. And what we just saw here is the music plugin, of course, and the footstep plugin available up here. And hopefully after this video, you understand how both of them work and what a great value this actual bundle is. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.